my cousin Dan and I were trying to get on the fishing fame board by catching a huge fish. Have you ever really wanted something? I mean really wanted it. Then maybe you will understand how badly I wanted to be on that board, and why I had to break some rules to try and get there. I am not talking about cheating. I am talking about just bending and stretching rules that aren't really good rules anyway until they break a bit. That's how Dan and I ended up in one of his dad's paddle boats. We whizzed past the flags, over the shark net and out into the bay. We had to get around the corner and out of sight in case someone tried to stop us, so we leaned forward and pedaled like racing cyclists. My legs burned and my chest heaved, but we made it all the way to Shark Point. Shark Point was where the drain from the freezing works emptied out. The drain wasn't for water, it was for blood and guts instead. It was like a gory shark takeaway bar. It was also the perfect place to catch a big one. We found a good spot and put secret recipe bait on our hooks, then threw them in. Nothing happened. Any bites yet? asked Dan. <sighs> no, I sighed. I really thought this plan would work. We can't give up yet, said Dan. It is a brilliant plan. It has to work soon. So we waited. And waited. And waited. After a bit longer, we were really bored. For some fun, we tied our lines to the ring on the front of the boat and pedaled around backwards without looking. We tried to act like it was fun, but it wasn't very exciting. The big pipe from the drain began to flow. Oh, yuck, I said, leaning away from it, because I had nearly pedalled right under the blood and guts. That's disgusting, said Dan, and we tried to pedal away. The sea went pink and started to go bubbly around us. What's going on? I asked, just before fins burst up through the waves. Holy moly, it's sharks, yelled Dan. Oh, let's get out of here, I shouted, starting to backpedal. We pedalled faster, but something was holding us in place. We were still pedalling backwards, but the boat began to move forward. Something was pulling us. The boat went quicker and the pedals went crazy and our feet slid off them. They flashed and spun more and more as the boat got faster. I can't get my feet back on, I shouted. Neither can I, yelled Dan. Hold on. We were dragged out and away from Shark Point, skimming over the water like a jet boat. Backwards and forwards we flew across the bay. What do you think it is? asked Dan. A shark, I said, because you don't have to be a rocket scientist to know that there are probably sharks at Shark Point. Must be a big one, Dan said. Then the nose of the boat began to go down. Oh no, it was going to dive like a submarine, and I have never liked submarine movies. Get up, I shouted. Stand on the back of the boat. We stood at the back and held onto the seats like water skiers. That worked. But it was a bad thing because it worked too well. The nose popped back up too fast and threw me into the water. Forget about the shark net rule. I was not only swimming outside the shark net, I was most probably swimming with a shark. Have you ever heard of Jaws? Well, if you have, you will understand why I had to scream a lot. And if you haven't, well, you don't want to know. I knew about Jaws, and I also knew some rules about sharks. Do not swim with sharks. But if you are swimming and a shark comes along, do not kick your legs around a lot. Stay calm. Do not bleed. Do not wee in the water. It is a funny thing that you can know rules off by heart, and then break them all even if you don't want to. And believe me, I really didn't want to. All I really want to say about this is, at least I didn't bleed. Luckily, Dan is really brave, and he is probably my best friend as well as my cousin. He reached for my arms and pulled me up onto the boat. We scrambled back into our seats and held on to each other. All of our stuff had fallen overboard, and I even lost my brother's camera. Oh, I think we're in trouble, I whispered but I think Dan had figured that out already because he was a funny pale colour. How long do you think it can fight? said Dan. Oh, I don't know, I said. But sharks have rows of teeth, and they grow new ones all the time, so if they break some, they don't run out of teeth, ever. 
It was a shame that, even though we have read lots of shark books, we couldn't remember reading anything about how long it takes for sharks to get tired. It turned out that it wasn't getting at all tired, and it could fight for a very long time. We were hungry, but our lunch was gone, so we sat and listened to our stomachs growling while we got towed around and around. Finally, the boat began to slow down, and we could get our feet back on the pedals. We tried to untie the knot in our fishing line, but it had pulled too tight, so we just gave up and waited. Sometimes the shark pulled us, and sometimes we pulled the shark. It was hard because we always had to go backwards so that the line wouldn't get tangled in the paddles. It took heaps of pedaling, and it was lucky our legs were fit from riding our bikes, even though we usually rode them forwards. It was nearly dark when we started to get closer to home. That's when a funny thing happened. We stopped thinking about not getting eaten by a shark, and we started thinking about the fishing fame board again. You know, I think we might just get on that board this time, I said. Yep, said Dan. I think we have a pretty big shark on our line. Or maybe a huge shark, I said. Or even an enormous shark, he laughed. <laughs> it was hard because we were tired, but we pedaled backwards as fast as we could and aimed for the flags. We had just zoomed past the flags when the boat stopped. And we remembered the shark net. The floats along the top were bobbing, and a fin thrashed up out of the water. It wasn't big. It wasn't huge. It wasn't even enormous. That thing was gigantic. Oh no! I yelled. It's stuck in the net. Oh, stupid net! Moaned Dan. We'll have to go another way. Go another way. Now we were on one side of the net, and the shark was on the other. It was thrashing about, looking angry and gigantic. We could just jump off and swim for the shore, I said. No way, Jose! Shouted Dan. His face was all red. His eyes were bulging. And right then, I thought he looked a tiny bit crazy. We've come too far to blow it now, said Dan. He started pedaling forwards, back out to sea. The trouble with that is that. We both had to pedal to go forwards, and I wasn't keen, so the boat just went in circles. You've got to help me, Max. You've got to pedal like you've never pedaled before. He shouted. I didn't want to, but I could tell he wasn't in the mood to talk about it, so I started pedaling again. We roared back past the flags, and the line pulled tight. Harder and harder we pedaled. Come on, come on! Shouted Dan. Our pedal suddenly stopped. Keep trying! Screamed Dan. We can't! I said. The shark will pull free in a minute. He said. He was still trying to pedal, but the pedals were jammed. Can't you see? I said. It's not the shark. We went forward, and now the paddles are tangled in the fishing line. Oh no! Cried Dan. I can't believe it. But it was true. We put our heads down and puffed for a while. Now we were really stuck, and we needed to think about it. The floats on the shark net were still bobbing and bouncing. That meant we still had our shark trapped, which was good, and bad. It was good because it meant that we still had a chance of getting on the fishing fame board. It was bad because the shark was between us and the beach, and the only way to get there was to swim. Maybe if we just sit here, someone will come and save us. Said Dan in a small voice, and I was glad he had finished yelling. There's no one out there. It's getting dark. I said. You won't believe this, but I've started to wish that my mum would come and find me, no matter how much trouble I was in. We can't just stay here. I said. What if it gets out of the net and tows us way out to sea? We'd never be able to pedal back. Said Dan. We're going to have to swim for it. I said. And I felt sick. Oh man," said Dan. "I don't like that plan. How else can we get to safety?" I said. We sat and looked at the shore. It seemed a very long way away. Up behind the beach, the street lights turned on. Right," said Dan. "We have to do it. We'll jump when I count to three. One, two, three. We jumped out and splashed into the water. 
It's hard to swim with a life jacket on, and I was making lots of noise, which is a bad thing to do if you don't want a shark to spot you. Lie on your back, said Dan, and I finally remembered what we had learned about life jackets. I lay on my back, and together we kicked quietly towards the beach. I felt the floats and rope of the shark net pass under my legs. I held my breath, but nothing grabbed me, which was a big relief. We're safe from the shark now, Dan said. And then we both kicked as hard as we could to get to the beach quickly. I felt stones under my feet and I leapt out of the water and lay on the beach. Wow, said Dan. I know, I said. There wasn't much more to say after that, so we lay there for a minute and thought about our adventure. What are we going to do? said Dan. I really don't know, I said. Not only were we in trouble with Mum and Uncle Dave, I was also going to be in trouble with Ben for losing his camera, and he is meaner than a sack full of snakes when I damage his stuff. Even when it's an accident, and it almost always is. Maybe I should come to your house tonight. I mean about the shark, said Dan. That was going to be a problem. When I made my brilliant plan, I didn't think about what to do if our fish was too big to pull in. But there was another thing. Even if we got the shark out of the water, we couldn't take a picture. I know you're smart, so I'm sure you can figure out that no picture meant we wouldn't get on the fishing fane board. To tell the truth, I had just about had enough of that shark. I just wanted to lie in the sand. I wanted to go home for my tea. I wanted to do anything but try and get that shark out of the water. We can't leave it there, you know, said Dan. I did know, and I was thinking hard. We need help, I said. But who could we ask? <laughs>